broadcast is going to be FlyQuest versus Renegades. The winner is in the league play of North America for RLCS. Let's go over to the commentary desk with Wave Punk and Bottable Carpet. Take it away, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's so good to be back here for season four, the most important season of the Rocket League Championship Series. I'm Wave Punk. I'm my good friend, Findable Carpet here. Carpet, how are you feeling today? Uh, you know, it's a little smoky. It is a little smoky. A little smoky here in the area. The carpet and I actually both might be homeless by the end of the day. You never know. That, that, that could happen. As long, as long as the games are good, I think we can chalk it up to a good day. If you step outside, in the words of Ed Sheeran, I see fire oh. on the mountains. You would always bring in the music. Yeah, burning the trees, man. All right, so what do you think? First game, how are you feeling about both these teams? These are two, two dynamite teams in my top eight that I published way before we published the bracket. I actually have both these teams making it into RLCS, both Renegades hmm. and FlyQuest, formerly known as Equinox. So they, they do have a chance still, so mm -hmm. I, it's really hard to kind of follow along. If you have gone to the to the actual bracket page, it's smash.gg. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see if you if they lose here, they have to play through a few more, and then on the, on the lower bracket, two teams still get a shot at yeah. making it. So four will make it into the RLCS and the uppers, two will make it into the lowers. Uh, you know, it's really I I, I really like, enjoy watching FlyQuest. I was kind of rewatching some of their their more recent games at Brisk and and some of the things they've been doing. They like to play really reactionary. They usually like whenever they're retreating, they try and do it with a purpose. And a lot of times, you know, they they go for the kind of quick uh, counterattacks if mm -hmm. they can. They've got the skill. But the thing about counterattacks is you have to be precise. Essentially, within two or three touches, you have to get it to exactly where you need it, or you've run out of time and the team has retreated. So a lot of times, you're kind of depending on your skill if you're going to rely on counterattacks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, get up and get loud. It's game day for season four of the Rocket League Championship Series. It's FlyQuest versus Renegades. Got Renegades here in the orange, FlyQuest in the blue. One of these teams will move into the Championship Series in this match. The other one guaranteed a spot in the Rival Series. We'll have an opportunity to play for the Championship Series once more later on today. And so far, it has been FlyQuest. The majority of the offensive pressure here. The first 30 seconds of game number one. Best of fives, these series. Got to win three to move in to the championship series. Corrupted now in the middle. Trying to flick it over. Dapper gets the read. And Sad Jr. in with a follow-up. Another shot towards oh. Net. Puts it through. And a bump, it looks like, came through from his teammate, Delpha Map. Yeah, Corrupted G again trying to retreat with a purpose. Don't just go out for no reason. He came around. He saw Moses in Net. Boom. Moses actually probably could have had the reaction time to get that. Now, it may have been a weak touch, but his goal was just to put it to the corner. But it doesn't matter if you've been completely removed. Well played by Corrupted G. We were watching backstage before the show started. We were watching FlyQuest playing in some of the earlier matches. That sending the linebacker up to bump the goalie out of a play they were using multiple times uh -oh. in those earlier matches. Sad Jr. trying to play Moses. Getting out under. I believe every player on the pitch right now has had experience in previous RLCS seasons. So two top caliber teams here for the first match of the day. Renegades finally getting an opportunity on the offense. And Moses takes a shot towards the net, corrupted back into the corner. And Sad Jr. will pause it, try and set it up for Corrupted G, who bumps Dapper onto the ceiling. Sad Jr.'s touch will clear it away, but it passes it straight back to Moses. And now Timmy lurking for an opportunity. He'll fall back, put it back in the middle, set up for Dapper, who puts it onto the backboard. The bump onto Dapper again, opening up space here for FlyQuest to try and get some defense, but they're going to have to maintain ball control at least out to midfield if they want to relieve this siege right now. They are staying patient, though. They don't seem to be panicking very much. Chrome rotating into net. They're always leaving someone back, but right now, Ooh, if Corrupted wasn't able to get there, it could have been a risky opportunity. Play down to Sad Jr. will finally move the ball into the orange. 3.05 left on the clock, and it's FlyQuest with the lead, and now an opportunity to extend it here as they are in Renegade's territory. Four players in the corner. Corrupted G over the top of Timmy. Sad Jr. in, wins the 50-50. A good opportunity here. Moses goes up with the 50-50 again in favor of FlyQuest. Chrome will drop it down two to nothing now. The moment this contest happened, Chrome knew that if he won this at all, he would be the last man standing. So even after that bump, even after he followed that all the way through, mm. took his time to get the angle, let the ball drop a bit more, space itself from the backboard until he had the angle to solidify the goal. The composure to win an aerial 50-50 and then continue to chase it without landing. Shows the caliber of these players. Sad Jr. shot goes wide. Corrupted will drop this oh. one down to Chrome. A nice shot, a good pass. Blocked away by Dapper and they'll keep it at just a two goal game. Renegade struggling to score here in game number one. They had one good offensive push before the last goal was scored. Another demolition, Corrupted G in, passes across the net. Moses now back out to midfield. Sad Jr. will keep the pressure on. FlyQuest looking to extend their lead. They're just keeping this ball up in the Renegades box. 
on the Renegades half. Timmy's touch is soft, and Dapper wasn't able to get a wheel onto it. Sad Jr. will put it right back into the corner again. Well placed by Moses, trying to keep behind that ball, make sure that the 50-50 win in his favor. Dapper trying to get there for the shot. Timmy had a nice pass. Dapper wasn't able to quite finish it off. Well defended by the FlyQuest boys. Dapper now, Timmy following it through. There a shot is. towards net into the goal. And there's Renegades on the board. I mean, this is just clinical right here. He has all the time he can. No one contesting this. I'm sure he could hear no boost coming for him. He took his time for that shot. Placed it beautifully under that crossbar. I think the defender, if he maybe taken his time, gotten a bit closer to net. He stayed too far out, so his reaction time would need to be quicker mm -hmm. because he's closer to the shot than he is to the net. So I think if he'd gotten a little bit closer to the bottom of that net, he may have been able to get up for it. But either way, well placed by Timmy. Rubbage to put this into the box. Can he finish it off himself? It'll be defended by Moses. Sad Jr. now in the corner. Setting this up, Chrome is airborne. And the 50-50 goes to the side. Sad Jr. around the corner, onto the wall. Timmy's there to keep the ball lofted. Keep it from crossing the net in a dangerous position. Dapper will drop this to Moses as Timmy falls back for boost. The two-man offensive push here. Moses gets zoned out. Timmy will rotate up to mid, picks it up from Chrome. 50-50 from Sad Jr. rolls it up the wall. Now Corrupted G in his own corner. A final minute of game number one of season four. As FlyQuest up by one. And with an opportunity to extend here, Sad Jr. moves it down the field a bit faster than he probably wanted to as it just gave the ball right back to Timmy. Crumble will drop it towards Sad Jr. Corrupted G's right on top of him. They'll keep the pressure on. They just need to keep this pressure on to win game number one. Corrupted G to try and come off the wall. Doesn't quite make contact. But again, just ball control, just holding on to it, not allowing Renegades to gain any foothold. But a shot from Moses. Chrome will defend it and send it away. Dapper now moving up on some missed touches. FlyQuest had a moment, a scary spot there. But Moses now over the top. Dapper in the middle. Opportunities, oh. options. But Timmy in again. On well, back defended. once more. And the final countdown, of game one. Can Renegades do it? They need one goal to send us to overtime. Over the top, it's going to go what? through. It goes what? over. <laughs> a flop on defense, and we've got a tie game. I don't know where that hesitation came from. Maybe a lack of communication corrupted and Chrome. I think maybe he got bumped he just, a tiny yeah, bit there. Maybe. I think Timmy may have gotten in his way for that save. It really was kind of a routine save there. Yes, quick reaction, but that wasn't a crazy shot. But either way, tying it up with four seconds left. Renegades keeping it interesting here in game number one. Uh-oh. Can anyone make the buzzer beater happen? Moses keeps it alive. Oh, Chrome's there. He's got support from Sad Jr. They'll touch it twice in the air and take a shot towards the box. Dapper now over to the side. This looks like it will probably drop a touch here. Will overtime in game number one. They wasted no time getting to the overtime. That carpet. must be crushing for FlyQuest. They were so close to getting that first notch on their belt, but now they will have to fight through overtime to get it. Both teams still three games away from the Rocket League Championship Series. Ball three up, Renegades. Some good pressure there. Moses got grounded quickly and there was no immediate follow-up pressure. <sighs> Karate G doesn't make contact with Timmy, is none able to make the shot. He did cut off enough angle though, forced Timmy to place it wide. Chrome to Karate G, now to the corner. Karate will read this one off the wall, but looking for Sad Jr. in the oh middle. Takes the shot God! to the net, beautiful pass. Beautiful connection, FlyQuest is up by one. Only took him 30 seconds, and on this counterattack, Timmy with the weak, clear, and corrupted, just trying to center that out. And Sad Jr., we know he can make shots, no matter how his car's oriented, no matter where on the pitch he is, he will put that on target when needed. And FlyQuest will get the win they thought they had before overtime. They must be feeling good. Yeah, you gotta breathe a sigh of relief. They didn't throw, they didn't yeah. let it go. They're able to finally get the win here. Game number one, now only two wins away from qualifying for the Rocket League Championship Series here in season Season four and so much pressure here. Uh, basically, even shots nine to seven between FlyQuest and Renegades, but it did feel like, especially in regulation, it was FlyQuest that was doing the majority of the offense, keeping that mm -hmm. ball in the orange half. It, it felt like there was a lot of patience from Renegades, which I did like to see. Even when they were down 2 0, they weren't trying to force too much. They weren't going up when they had no boost. Mm -hmm. If they knew they needed to buy time because they just dealt with a lot of offense.
Lakers, they'd get a hard clear. They knew they'd lose possession, but they'd gather up some boost, let them drive again, mm -hmm. get another hard clear when there was too much pressure. They'd wait until one of those drives was a little bit weaker, mm -hmm. and they were able to keep more boost, and then they'd start to bring it out. And that's when they were able to get those two goals in. Just in, I mean, like again, that second shot mm. probably should have been saved, but it could, I, I, I want to say, I think it was Chrome that went up for that save. I want to mm -hmm, say yeah. Timmy got in his way last second. I saw the little like spark of like two cars yeah. bumping into each other. Could have been coincidental. Could have been whatever it was. But either way, he couldn't get there for the save. But they're being patient, which I like to see. But I'm a little fearful because if you get too complacent, especially when there's this much on the line and they were down by two, mm -hmm. they managed to pull it out with four seconds left. So I just want to make sure they still have that fire when they're going in to get those shots. It was beautiful to watch the passing plays we were seeing on both sides of the ball here. Saw so Dapper to Timmy, and then there at the end, Sad Jr. connected with a teammate to put it through. The only really like strong solo goal I felt like we saw was Chrome winning the aerial 50-50 and then following it up yeah. in front of the box. It's great to see the team plays coming out here. FlyQuest starting up on the offense again. Sad Jr. <gasps> to try and roll it over. Does not quite get the full touch, and it will cross the net without going in. Chrome wins that 50-50 strong. He'll be back in the corner again. All of Renegades having to turn around. Sad Jr. taking another shot on the pass from Corrupted G, and Timmy gets the save. But they'll keep the pressure on. Corrupted will try to drop it softly into the box, but no contact. And now Dapper will be able to move this one back out. Sad Jr. to Corrupted G. The quick rotation. Sad Jr.'s airborne. Puts it onto the backboard once more. Here comes Chrome to drop it down and in. And that's FlyQuest with the lead again. This decision from Sad Jr. is perfect. He knew not to drop it because Dapper had the reaction. There's a good chance it would have gone right off his hood. So instead, he puts it off the backboard one more time, seeing that Dapper was their last defender. He was up in the air. He was not grounded at all, had no more control. Gave it up to a teammate, both selfless and efficient. Chrome now down and into the orange corner. The first goal happening here in the first minute of game two. Flyquist with the lead again. Both Chrome and Corrupted in the corner. They'll bump Dapper high, but it's just Sad Jr. in the back as Moses sets it up for Timmy. Takes a shot towards the net. Sad Jr. gets the save. Sends it away. It was, might have been a bit wide anyways, but still beautifully defended by the veteran player. That was hard to tell. I couldn't. That could have either perfectly in the corner or just a crossbar, but you don't want to let that. Just You don't want to check that. Yeah, don't leave that up to chance. As Chrome carries that off to under the wall. Interesting decision there and a beautiful way to get it past Timmy. Corrupted again using the wall. It's the wall just being the fourth oh. player here. Corrupted G will score. Watch the way they use the wall to get it past every single defender. Not only were they using that wall perfectly as people contested, <laughs> but Timmy got slammed last second by Corrupted G. There's a good chance he could have gotten at least cut off a bit of angle if he'd gotten around that ball. But Corrupted G landed, smacked him out on accident, and now a two-goal lead for FlyQuest. 3.41 left to go. FlyQuest got out to the two-goal lead in game number one as well. And Renegades oh. was able to make the comeback. Look oh, a demolition. Krepp what, what was that flip? Oh, man, I wish he had scored because I wanted to see that again. These hard cut these hard cut passes right now are absolutely phenomenal from FlyQuest. Krepp to G now. Going for second touch. The 50-50 will just drop in front of Moses and Chrome will tackle. Now Krepp to G with an opportunity demo, demoed by Dapper. And then Chrome demolished as well. And Renegades, what looked like they were starting to get outplayed on the defense. They'll just remove the offensive players and regain ball control. Moses, excellent flick over the top of Chrome. He's got Dapper in support. Can he set it up? They go for the zone on Sad Jr., who still gets the clear off to the side. Corrupted G will follow it through. He and Chrome both went for that and lost the 50-50. But Sad Jr. with an excellent clear to move it back and into the orange box. Oh, He'll just get the is. play, put it in all by himself. What a play by Sad Jr. They mentioned it on the desk. Sad Jr. should not be forgotten. He may have been quiet these past few seasons, but he still has what it takes to get the victory. 3-0 now for FlyQuest. Sad Jr. making some phenomenal decisions in this game alone. 2.44 left to go. Renegades was able to make the two-goal comeback last game. But now down by three. Can they do it again? Shot towards the net. Timmy's Ooh. in front of the box. He'll put that one through. This is the beginning. This is what they need. They're only down by two now. Quickly turning it around. Corrupted G unable to get that touch, which really put Sad Jr. in a tight spot. You saw him coming up out of net, prepared for that, trying to get a quick counterattack. Especially on kickoff, you want to try and get as much momentum as possible because you see what happens when it goes in your favor. Renegades gets a point on the board. Sad Jr. airborne, dapper, airborne first. Sends it away. Chrome now into the corner to bounce it out. Krepigy's there, but loses the 50-50 with Moses. 
Now to play it downfield. Corrupted G in the corner. Going to try and pass it out. Sad Jr.'s right there. Sends a shot towards oh the net, but it misses. He is playing so well, honestly. Even just his ability to make those contests, he just got that dunk, almost went straight towards net. And their defense has been working as well. They're playing patient. They're making sure that they're getting back so that they don't have to worry about any quick attacks from Renegades. But now we'll see a quick counterattack. Corrupted G needs to place this over to the corner. Gets a pass, Dapper. And pass Moses as well. But Dapper will be able to pick it up as the second touch. He lost a bit of ball control, got to outdistance the car. Now Sad Jr. Position. Carry this one through. And drops in front of the Ooh. net. Moses to send it away. But here comes Chrome into the corner. A nice pass outwards. Where's Sad Jr.? He's hanging in the back. Knows they've got the two-goal lead and they don't need to continue on. Demi will try to push this one through. 125 left to go. Still a two-goal game in favor of FlyQuest. I mean, you said it there. I think it's a huge part. Make sure you don't overcommit, especially if you're a team that is two goals in the lead. And there, Chrome again with another 50-50. Bumping Timmy. So much physical play coming out of FlyQuest, and it has gotten them three of these four goals so far. Oh. Timmy, what is he going to do? Chrome just smacks him <laughs> out last second, just underneath its undercarriage of his car, and they are now three goals ahead with a minute 14 left. I don't know if they can come back. We'll see. They're down by three. The three-goal comeback has only happened a few times. Our LCS championships, championship series. We'll play this one down. Final minute. Oh, oh it's dropped right oh. in front of the box. Can't oh, get no. it through. Oh, it'll go <laughs> off to the side. I'll try to drop this one through and away. These guys playing so much. The the, the three goal comeback is so difficult. It just it's just a daunting feeling. Like if someone told me that I had to come back three goals. If I had to make three goals back on a team, especially a team that is professional and has RLCS experience, I'm going to feel very scared, to be honest. Very, very scared. Last 30 seconds here of game two. And it's looking like everything's in FlyQuest's book here. They took the win in game number one. And barring a miracle from Renegades, they'll take it here in game two as well. The question being, what does Renegades have to do at this point? Down by two, best of five, their only option to make it in to RLCS. Through the upper bracket will be the reverse sweep, which was a great story that happened over and over again in season three. But season four, teams have had so much time to perfect their plays here. It's going to change things up a bit, as we're definitely going to see FlyQuest taking the victory here in game two. And that, that's the coin to poo goal. I think we can we yeah. chalk that up to. I mean, what are you going to do, right? You have to commit at that point. You have to overcommit. And you're down by four mm -hmm. or three goals. What for? You might as well just go for it. Mere seconds left, but now FlyQuest will be up 2-0 in the series. If they get this clean sweep, they will make it into RLCS without dropping anything in their qualifying game. That will feel great for them going into league play. Yeah, these guys playing like a team who wants to be here. They were a team that a lot of people had questions about when they formed in the offseason, not knowing how are these players going to play together. But they have played so well, come up in such a good way. And we, we've talked about Sad Jr. all the time. This is a guy that no matter what team he's on, he finds a way to make it to the finals. He finds a way to make it into league play. And while yep. sometimes you can look at him and be like, he just hasn't been having the same play we saw from him way back at the beginning of Rocket League, he's still performing at the top level on the top eight spectrum. Mm -hmm. and, and just when I'm watching Renegades play right now, it seems like they can't find a middle ground. Either they commit for things that probably won't result in a whole lot, and that's when they're getting caught and have to retreat quickly for defense. And we already know FlyQuest is great on those counterattack plays. Or when they're on defense, they're playing too reactionary. Mm. Like they're waiting, and that's why you're getting a lot of these really hard-angled passes to the middle that are getting completely uh, uh, unanswered, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I think they need to find that middle ground where like, w we should probably get a little more aggressive on defense and, and maybe only commit to things that they need to. I saw them playing patient in the first game, which got the game was a bit closer. But now, I mean, you can see the spread now five yeah. to one. Probably, I'd say four to one personally. But who, sure. who am I? But, but you look at the look at the shot differential, eleven to three, getting a shot yeah, out shot so heavily rough. there. Renegades really needing to find some semblance of consistent offense here. And I feel like part of it, they're they're losing a lot of 50 fifties. Is like I I keep on wanting to go back to that Chrome goal we saw in game number one, mm -hmm. where he wins the aerial 50 50 and is able to follow it up. And just just winning the 50 50 in the first place is good to be an accomplishment right now for Renegades because the polish on the FlyQuest roster right now is really something they're struggling with. And as we get game three underway, FlyQuest one game away from qualifying for RLCS for season four. Chrome in the air, not going to get through the two defenders that went up. Carpenter will look to pass back to Sad Jr. 
And now Timmy plays the pass one, takes it towards the net, and Sad Jr. in the back. He's been a fantastic setup man, a fantastic scorer, and also a brilliant goalie all series long. So they'll bump Dapper out of the way, and Chrome will flip it back. Moses to try and continue this on. Dapper's in net, messing with the players, but it's not going to work out. Sad Jr. gets to clear out. But this is what Renegades need. They need to get this consistent offense. I mean, you need to find that hole. You want to force the defense into a rough spot. You want to try and make it to where FlyQuest makes a mistake. They've been patient so far. They know they have the lead. Two games up right now in the series. They're not going to falter right now. They're not going to make silly mistakes unless you put the pressure on them. First minute will come and go pretty quietly here after seeing goals scored in the first minute, I think, in both games one and two. Trepa G pick this one up. The, the rotation, the defense, oh, can Dapper do this? No, oh. Crow deletes him after Moses removed the goalie, opening up the space for Dapper. Crow comes from the back. I shall avenge my friend. And gets rid of Dapper. And he'll bump him along too, just one back in net right now. Moses will rotate, you know, cut in from the mid and keep it in the corner. Now Krupa G out of rotation, this one will move down the field. The demolition play becoming more and more consistent as the series goes on. Oh, but Timmy getting it past. Sad Jr.'s there. He'll play it to the side once more. The defense from this master as he keeps it away. Is it going to? Oh, it doesn't go in. It finally looked like they had found a way past Sad Jr. And they couldn't shoot. They couldn't get it in. 3.15 left to go. We're still scoreless. Moses now with an opportunity. It goes high. Finally. There's Timmy to finally finish it off. And Renegades has the lead for the first time. I want to give this to Dapper. You saw how long Dapper was contesting that ball. Mm. He had all three players just sitting there all grounded because he kept contesting them one by one. They were trying to slowly drag it out, but Dapper was there time and time again, and it doesn't matter eventually him to Moses to Timmy the striker, and they are now up for the first time in this series. I want to see how Renegades plays. Do they change anything now that they are playing from the lead? Timmy takes such patience there to bait in Sad Jr. and then play underneath. They have an opportunity to extend the lead here. They go for the zone on Chrome, but he'll play that one away and off to the side. Moses now to follow this one through in the air. A double tap, it does not make contact, and Dapper does not have a good read on the rebound. To me, with lots of space to be able to send it back into the box. Again, playing this one high. Two excellent clears in a row right now from FlyQuest. And then the follow up from the G will move it, transition it all the way back down the field. To me, has it in the corner. Sad Jr. there, this time he'll get the read. Not to be outplayed once more. Chrome drops it back across the field, but Sad Jr. knows Dapper's there first. Back and forth right now. Both teams just pushing the ball and following it up with at least one player, just looking for a moment of weakness, looking for a hole in the rotation to push through, but respecting when the teammates, when the other team has the correct position and backing off right now. And really clean play right now. Yeah, and they're trying to find that time where Finally, when their drive allows them to steal some boost and take full control. If they notice the other team snags boost, they know it's a bit of a risk to overcommit because they can get counterattack. But if they keep snagging those corner boosts, they know that they can cleanly keep the pressure up and that every counterattack is going to probably be pretty slow, save for a couple of wonky 50-50s. The patience right now from Timmy. He is really baiting players in in an excellent way that forces them way out of rotation and keeps him with complete ball control. But right now, he's going to have to find more than that if he wants to be able to get this one out. He gets it passed. Look at the flick. He's just got to put it into oh. the net, sends it through. It's 2-0 Renegades. That junior committed knowing that he may have been able to get those two goalies grounded. Moses mm. wasn't there yet, and Dapper was still retreating. So all he had to do was beat Timmy, but he misguided that a bit too much. Wasn't able to predict that. Timmy was there a pretty solid chunk before Sad Jr. was. And all he had to do in that line drive is make sure he got around the ball. Two goals up for Renegades. Well, Timmy's had options here in game three. He has made the most of it, scoring two times. Now the best chance we've seen Renegades to win all series long. Two players in for that. Dapper wins the 50-50. But Corrupted G will be able to pick it up, tries to slow it down. See, Corrupted G trying to do the same thing Timmy did to Sad Jr. earlier, but working out with significantly less success. But still well defended by Sad Jr. Played into the corner. Dapper trying to slow it down with the flick over one. Corrupted G's there, and now he's got a cherry pick in Sad Jr. He goes for the bump on Timmy instead. But Corrupted will be able to play it in the middle. Nobody there for FlyQuest. Dapper down the field. Final minute of game number three. And Renegades with their backs against the wall. For the victory in this series, they have found a way to get the lead here in game one if they hold on to this. Still a threat from FlyQuest, only being down by two. If they score immediately, they'll have plenty of time to possibly score a tying goal, but 
right now. It's looking like Renegades has complete control. And Timmy just does it again. The fake game from Timmy has been monumental. I mean, talk about shot differential. Ten shots for Renegades, a single shot for FlyQuest. Ten shots to one right now cannot feel good going through the rest of the series right now. FlyQuest may have the lead, but they're just as much of a risk right now as Renegades Oof. for getting knocked into the lowers. As with the best of five, it's only once you win one game, just changes up everything. And even if they score this goal here, it won't matter. Renegades to take game number three. And game two, we saw FlyQuest out you Renegades by a score by a margin of eight here. So you said it's eleven shots to one by the end of that. Oh my goodness. That's the you ouch the, the way that they completely flipped the table, slowed it down, won the 50-50 game, and let Timmy have control and do what he wanted. When he had the space to do what he was what he wanted to do, he was completely outplaying the FlyQuest roster. It was yeah. brilliant to watch that guy. Play. I mean he generally is a quiet player, but he has the mechanics. You heard them talk about it on the desk. When he's there to take the shot, he's there to take the shot, and he's mm -hmm. always there when he needs to be. And a lot of great decisions from both teams. I'm enjoying it. Sad Jr. being super selfless, understanding when it's better to put it on the backboard mm -hmm. to pull out a defender mm -hmm. than it is to go back. So essentially in a situation when I'm a defender and the ball is floating somewhere above my net and I see an opponent coming for it, I have to do something. I have to go up to contest this. And if he has me beaten pace at all, he's got full control of this play. If he wants to drop it down on me, I'm going to try and cut off as much angle as I can, mm -hmm. go straight up from the net directly at the ball so that it shuts off as many angles as possible. But if he decides to go anywhere else, he's essentially removed me from the play. Now he's removed himself, sure. so it relies on his teammates to be able to get that next shot. Sure. But if I was last defender, which has often happened in this series, then someone's going to be. I mean, it was only four registered saves out of the 11 shots. Yeah, but the three of them on Sad Jr., I want to compliment his defensive play. It's not just that he's getting the saves. It's the way he's getting the saves. He's mm. putting them into the corners every time. He's getting beautiful saves that function as clears, and I think that significantly more of the shots from Renegades would have gone through if his saves had been any less accurate, and often putting it in the balls of the dead zones of the corners. But they're really going to have to figure it out on, on offense, figure out what they were doing again. Get those pass plays going that we saw in games one and two. They want to finish this off. Or Renegades is going to push them to game five, and it's going to go the full distance. Sad Jr. in the corner to set it up for Corrupted G. Dapper gets a touch, but it's soft. Corrupted G is just waiting this one patiently. He'll put it back in the corner. And Moses, no speed on the ball, no speed on his car. He's not going to be able to clear that one at all. And then getting demolished. It's Chrome with ball control now. And Sad oh. Jr. coming through. Wins the 50. There's no 50-50 here. He just touched. He does such a much better read. And his fly quest with the lead. Snug it right between the duo, Ooh. Timmy and Dapper, coming from both angles. But it does not matter. Sad Jr. found the perfect time, the perfect angle, and the perfect trajectory to sneak it through 30 seconds in they're up by one and this is like the stories we saw in games one and two scoring early on with the team passing plays a good touch by Crum to send that one away that's two defenders or two of the Renegades players in the net but Moses just comes in wins the 50 50 keeps it in the corner and then that gives them an offensive push Crum's 50 50 Timmy look at him follow this through does oh. this drop in it goes <laughs> through look at him make this 50 50 and then just chase it through the air what a play dude I did not think he'd have the angle or the power to be able to sneak this around sad junior and put it on target corrupted G even he was caught off guard he could have had the time had he been prepared but right over his teammate sad junior and that ball just sneaks right in tied game four minutes left Timmy's like I see what you did sad junior let me let me do you one better here I'll set it up for myself, and we have a tie game. Game number four, it's gonna go over into the blue corner. Off of the touch from Renegades, the 50-50 one out on second touch from Sad Jr. And Dapper will look for Timmy on the far side. Carpet G with respect, he'll screen that out and let Sad Jr. move up. That strong touch into an to a full backfield, just gives the ball control right back to Renegades, and it's in the box once more. Chrome off to the side, but it's strong off the wall. Timmy with another shot, this one wide, and Sad Jr. will pick it up. He's off to the races. Dapper will shut it down and move it right back into the corner, and Moses keeps the pressure up. You're seeing FlyQuest have to make these solid clears. Timmy here with a free shot. No, gets clear, but this one's up high. The less than ideal clear followed up by Corrupted G over to the side. And just the way that they're clearing it hard yeah. is just giving ball control right back to Renegades over and over again. Well, they needed to because uh, Renegades just kept stealing their boost. That's how they knew they could safely contest that many times in a row. They kept snagging those corner boosts. At one point, Sad Jr. had to give the boost up just to make sure he could contest mm -hmm. the ball. So that's how you know their pressure gave them the confidence to be able to keep that up. Chrome will let this one roll up to the side. Goes for the bump on uh -oh. Timmy, and it does its dirty work. Sad Jr. now into the corner with Moses. Moses wins the touch battle and will get ball control up at midfield. 
But Corrupt G able to tag, knowing that Chrome is right there in support. And now Moses coming up from the back. Lofted high. Corrupt G's there. He's falling through, but runs out of boost to contest Timmy's touch. Sad Jr. will win that one. But Dapper now with ball control falling towards the net. Sad Jr. with the clear once more. Timmy sends this down, and Chrome now to follow it through the air. Moses takes it away. Corrupt G in the corner. Back and forth between these teams right now. Oh. Moses right in front of the net is going to be unable to get there. And Chrome, look at the patience to slow that down and go for ball control instead of just clearing once more and continue ball control again. Corrupt G gets it over the top of one. But now Timmy in a very offensive position after being outgamed there. And Chrome is able to move this one all the way back on the field. Sad Jr. in the middle. Maybe Dapper who plays it off to the side. 145 left to go here in game four. Renegades needing this win to send us to game five. If they lose it here in game four, FlyQuest qualifies for the RLCS. Through the bottom there, corrupted to carry it off the wall. Chrome sits in net. Down the field. It is, it, it, generally, they're both playing the ping pong game right now, going for the long clears. And it's, it, well, the MC FlyQuest going for the ping pong game, and it's Renegades just going for the interference in the other opponent's half. They dribble it in, and then it gets cleared away, and then they dribble it in again. Rapid G finally trying to slow it down and keep it on his hood to move it out, but Timmy just takes it away. The 50 50 game that was so strongly in their favor Ooh. in games one and two here is just going consistently in Renegades' side now. And in the final minute of the gameplay, it's still tied up at one apiece. The hard clear from Chrome, but Timmy keeps it on, in his opponent or in his teammate's possession. We're seeing FlyQuest, they really want to be patient. They want to make sure that this last goal is the one to secure them the win, to secure them that spot in the RLCS. Chrome G, I think he was hoping for another team to be followed uh -oh. up. The three man aerial, can they do it? No, Chrome sends it to the side. Dapper was back in support to hopefully pick up anything that just dropped straight down, but it wasn't there. And now Corrupted G with an opportunity. He gets airborne, but Moses is there to take it away. And Dapper was on the ground to try and demo him. The game through the final 20 seconds of game four, tied up. Oh no, the bump in net, is this gonna be it? Dapper will take a shot, no, Moses, what happened here? The self bump in net, Corrupted G was already there, and then Sad Jr. came. <laughs> I guess didn't know he was underneath or expected Corrupted to go for that first touch. Oh no, the teammate bump secures Renegade that second goal with 14 seconds left. 14 seconds remaining. Will it go the distance? Wait. And with a kickoff. It looks like Renegades with the win on the kickoff as well. It's only a one goal game. They could still make this happen as long as they just keep the good ball from touching the ground once it hits zero. But nope. now, no, it's over. You pass it straight in front of the net. And what was a stellar defense from FlyQuest through games one and three falls apart here at the end of game four. And we're going to be going to game five in our first series of season four. I hope this isn't tilt that I see. Oh, I mean, I, I hope not as well. I hope that second goal is not the tilt because I'd love to see this fifth game go the distance as well. Overtime, game five, first qualifying match, why not? Let's do it. Let's set the tone of the day. Renegades all the way to We'll take two back to back. Will we see a reverse sweep that, that, in the that, first qualifying match? Got <laughs> Talk about setting a tone for their own season, you know? Like, yeah, uh, we made it in with a first sweep against FlyQuest. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's funny because it's like, oh, that was the story of season three. That was a lot of fun. But, you know, season three is over. Now it's season four. It's a completely different story. It's like, nope, going to keep doing it. We'll, we'll start it even sooner. It. Well, we'll see what yeah. happens. We'll wait and see if Renegades could do it. But keeping the outpacing game going here of nine shots to two, mm -hmm. Renegades with so much pressure. And it did feel like it was constantly, you, know, you talked about the boost management game that possibly enabled this, but we saw the FlyQuest boys constantly clearing, and then we saw yeah. Renegades picking it up on their hoods and driving it in and just forcing it. It was just constantly back and forth, and then when you have the defenders mix up in net like that, the game's going to go to Renegades. Well, essentially, if you're getting starved on boost, you just need to clear it, and then you all can spread out a little bit, grab a couple of boost pads. Mm. Whoever has the most boots maybe can stick in net and kind of wait for that to kind of contest it. If they go for another hard counter clear, then you can fly out and meet it and get another hard clear by your teammates just a bit more time. But if they're quick enough at, re at retrieving that ball and bringing it back, either A, 
boost won't spawn enough for you to get enough, or B, they'll be right down your throats again and force you to waste it all anyways. Mm -hmm. So they were able to keep it up. Renegades, they saw that opportunity that FlyQuest is being patient on their attacks. They're not dead. Now, now it's kind of flipped, right? Renegades was a little too, was a little too patient early on, mm -hmm. and now it feels like FlyQuest is too patient. They're not finding those attacks to go forward on. They're not taking a lot of the risk. We're not seeing those passes that we saw the first game. Those really hard angled passes to the middle mm -hmm. that were just completely pulling Renegades out of defense. We're not seeing those anymore, but it's because they're not getting the opportunities. And now after winning games one and two, FlyQuest has lost all the momentum to Renegades, who have taken two straight here with such dominating offense. Corrupted G with a flick over one and goes for the zone on Timmy. It's enough to give some space here to FlyQuest to possibly score. But we saw FlyQuest score first last game, and then it not matter in the end as Renegades was able to put on the Siege. As Timmy will clear that one back. Grab a G in net. Wins the 50-50 with Dapper. A good start here for FlyQuest. They need to be able to win the 1v1s, the close proximity 1v1s. Grab a G to send it to Chrome. So many players in this corner, just throwing the bodies at the ball, just hoping to keep it away from the box. Sad Jr. with a long rotation. He'll just pick that one up as Moses went for boost. And Tim will try and clear it in the middle, but Chrome now over to the side. Who follows this? It's Chrome. Off the wall, and Krepin G in support here. He'll have an opportunity to shoot here. It drops in off the crossbar. Accuracy going to help out FlyQuest. You know, I wish they could indicate to us when a miss or a missed touch was on purpose. Chrome didn't actually make contact with that, and it was contested as if he would. They thought it would come back off that backboard again with the second touch from Chrome, but it didn't get it at all. It came right back in the middle, and there's no way the goalie was going to get to it before the shooter. And Corrupted G gets the first goal for FlyQuest. Oh, Moses in the air. Chrome will take it away and drop it to Corrupted G and it'll move up. FlyQuest scored first in game four as well. And then Timmy put on a, mo a master class. Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Timmy. Oh, it was amazing stuff. He was able to get that game tied right back up. Can he do it again here in game five? And after dropping the first two games, give his team that berth into RLCS. The Ooh. shot here. Can Zach Jr. finish it off this <laughs> pass? This re he gets a reverse goal, but this is a reverse pass, too. My goodness. Corrupted sees an opportunity, oh. puts it right over Dapper, nearly on target, and somehow, Sad Jr. was able to read that off the crossbar. I can't tell which one is more impressive. Yeah. Probably the pass, because it was nearly a shot, but Sad Jr. somehow, knowing exactly where that was going to bounce, secures them a two-goal lead. As I see the nuts pass, and I'm like, no. And Sad Jr. is like, oh, yeah, I got that. I know where that's going. But Timmy now coming back on with the counterattack. It's been Timmy all series long, and he got it back to a one-goal game. I mean, just the patience and knowing exactly where to place it. He saw Sad Jr. and Corrupted G, so he puts it hard. Mm. Honestly, right towards the middle. Either of them could have had it. There may have been a bump there. I tried to look, but then I still caught myself watching Timmy take that beautiful shot anyways. Yep. I still couldn't pay attention to defense. But either way, sneaks in between a one-goal game. Very easy for Renegades to come back. And a quality pass from Moses as well. Excellent work by Renegades off the kickoff to make this a very manageable scoreline again. And Crow, can he get this follow-up? No one was really there. Corrupted G moves in, but they will be able to play it over to the side. Go for the transition off the wall. Dapper downfield, and now Sad Jr. Chrome with the follow-up. The shot towards the net is shut down by Moses. He sends it to the side. Timmy now. Moses tangled up on top of him as well. The quick turns here, but three players bunched up there from FlyQuest. Can Timmy get it down the field? He and Moses moving up together, and the bump game that has been so critical all season long, or all series long, comes back to play. I guess you could say all series long, or all season long, but Chrome, look at this shot here from the midfield. What a boomer. I mean, this was just a screamer. You're not going to be able to this save this very much. Yeah, I think it was a pinch off of two Ooh, players yeah. between Chrome and Corrupted. Look at that, 122 kilometers per hour, 76 miles per hour. Whichever region you're in, that's fast. My goodness. And just like that, it's FlyQuest again with the lead. Uh, those pinch goals, they're always so crazy. It's always so hard to tell. Like, are they really doing that on purpose? But like, the, he's like, I'm just going to sit here. And you're going to let the ball follow me. And I'm going to come up right on top of you. Send it away. And they've got the two goal lead once more. Sad Jr. very far out of rotation right now. Krepid G looks to buy him time. Timmy passes to Moses. 50-50 gets lost. Sad Jr. now down the field, open net. Can Chrome get up in time? He doesn't like the bounce, he'll leave it for Sad Jr. and go for boost instead. Also gets the demo on the Dapper. And Corrupted G, excellent touch to put it behind Timmy. Slow down that rotation here from Renegades. With two minutes left, they're down by two. We've seen them make this comeback before in this series. Can they do it again here in game five? It's going to be tough flight quest oh. now. Oh, what? How did that even manage itself middle? Sad Jr. again. 
he's always putting it around defenders. He'll rarely take the shot. He'd rather pull a defender out and give his teammates a better opportunity. I'm so impressed with his play today. Quick transitions here. Stafford moves it down. Moses comes inbound onto the open oh. net, puts it through, and it's a one-goal game. With a minute 41, that's so much time. Flat West is not out of the woods. They know they still have to fight for this victory. Everyone, like four players sitting right there underneath this shot, but no one could get back in time. Moses will send that to the far corner. One goal to tie it up. A, a minute 41 left. It, it felt like crowd dynamics or something like Dapper and Timmy going like, hey, goalies, how you doing? And they drive off this way. The goalies <laughs> just like drove with them. Thinking They're like, was going I'm doing pretty direction. good. How you doing? Yeah, let's, 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 let's talk as we go to the store, man. And Moses like, cool, free net. Sends that one through, one goal oh game. They get it God. through, it's just wide. Here comes Tapper, oh, Seth Jr. was what? right there, but could not do it, it's a tie game. Watch who this goes off of. Timmy out to Moses, and I think it goes back to Timmy what? again. He almost puts it on target, but Dapper is there to secure the goal. Tied game, a minute 25 left. Game number five, whoever oh. wins this will qualify for our LCS League play. You asked for overtime, it looks like they're gonna give it to you. Yes, please. I would hope for it. There is still so much time here left in regulation. But this back and forth. This is an emotional roller coaster that I wasn't prepared for for the first series of the day. Come on, we, we got a whole day of Rocket League left. <laughs> and they're, they're giving us the best stuff right up front here. And he sends it over the side. Sad Jr. onto the wall. Immediately looks for the demolition on Timmy. It comes up empty handed. He'll get the midfield boost and rotate here. Three players now in the orange for FlyQuest. Scrum tries to move that one through. Corrupted G lurking in the midfield. The fact that he wasn't in the back, it was a lot of room for Renegades to work with. Now 43 seconds remaining, tied at three apiece. Sad Jr.'s clear is just kind of a loft in front of the net. Demi will put it back into the box, Moses to drop it through, Sad Jr.'s there, but gets demolished, nobody's in net. Oh, Corrupted G, the save onto his own post. Dapper came in with the shot, but Corrupted G makes the play and keeps the hopes and dreams of FlyQuest alive. We'll get it past one more there, Chrome moving it up the field. With 15 seconds remaining. It's looking like it's coming down to Golden Goal or a buzzer beater at God. best. It's Corrupted G plays <laughs> to the side. Can they carry this one through? Dapper on the wall with two teammates in support. They're just keeping offensive pressure. They're just going all the way here. Can they keep this one up? Moses is airborne, but it will Ooh. drop down. You called it, Garbit. Game five overtime. This is it. Whoever gets the next goal will qualify for RLCS, and the losing team will go to the lowers. They will still have a shot, but it will be a longer hill for them to climb. Who will take this victory? Oh, and all the touches going in FlyQuest's favor right now. Look at this loft in front of the net. Corrupted G to bait up the defender. Sad Jr.'s right oh. there. And they played that overtime so perfectly. Not a single mistake here from FlyQuest as they qualify for RLCS. Moses waiting patiently for Corrupted's touch, and he wasn't able to make contact. Neither player going for it. And since it was fresh off of kickoff, he was the only one with boots and the only one in net. That must be so crushing for a game to go so close and in the end, end within seconds. Mm. But FlyQuest earned the victory, they deserve it. They fought valiantly for it, and in game number five, they will qualify themselves a spot yep. for the RLCS. Welcome to the Rocket League Championship Series, boys. You know, FlyQuest has got to be feeling good. They have you know? to be feeling so good. They're like, so oh, good. do we want to get into Rocket League, guys? Yeah, let's get into Rocket League. Let's sign these guys. When's the tournament start? Tomorrow? Cool. And then like, they wake up like, oh, okay, cool. They qualify. <laughs> good stuff. Good to see you, man. What I hope they're play. awake by now. Uh, yeah, the way that they turned this play around, dropping games three and four mm -hmm. in, in, in monumental fashion. They're just being completely outshot. So yeah. little offense being put up and then able to bounce back here. Team plays galore. So the, the stuff we saw from games one and two, FlyQuest going to make it through. I have to give so much credit to Renegades, though. Losing the first two games, being a single mm. game away from being swept right away, and they're able to nearly reverse sweep. They win the next two. They bring the la the third, uh, their potential third victory into overtime, yep. and they just barely lose in the end to a mistake and a misplay off of a kickoff. I think they have a huge chance of making it to the RCS mm -hmm. still. They do have to play a few more games now in the lowers, but I mean, if they're going to be angry, they're going to want that spot. I would be really fearful if I had to go against them in the lowers. Absolutely. Everyone will be watching out for Renegades. Is what a quality match we had just to start off our North American broadcast. It was a lot of fun. Let's see what the experts have to say over on the desk. Axel Toss, over to you. Thank you, Wave Punk and Findable Carpet. As y'all said, what an incredible match to start things off. Where do you even start? Game one goes to overtime. FlyQuest goes up 2-0. Oh, my God, are we going to have a first sweep? And then game five goes into overtime. Everything we could possibly ask for. What an amazing first match. Huge congratulations to FlyQuest. Your first team qualified.
for league play for this season. Now joining NRG and Rogue in group play. That's got to be huge for them. We have a Mobile One high performance replay to take a look at. I'm going to throw it over to these guys to talk about that match. What a series, guys. That's a way to start off. We had four world championship players, five players in league play last season. And FlyQuest, honestly, this whole entire series was if they had boost, they looked amazing. As soon as they ran out of boost, yeah. then Renegades was going off. Yeah, especially games three and four. Game four. Three and four. FlyQuest could not get out of their own half. Yeah. Renegades was completely controlling the pace, but really, this series was about two players for me. I thought Sad Jr. was solid all series long, had a huge goal at the end there, and then also on the other side of the ball, Timmy was spectacular. Yeah, this might have been the best Sad Jr. we've seen since maybe the first season he was with NRG when he was more of that offensive player and just going off. He had the most shots by far on his team, almost doubling up uh, both his teammates, 15 to eight for both his teammates. So. Like, uh, this is the Sad Jr. I love to see because that's when I played with him. He was that offensive juggernaut, and it's really oh, great to see him again. Oh, but in this play there, Moses, he's going to have nightmares about that moment. All he had to do was hit that ball just 15 seconds into overtime. His whiff costing him that game right there. He might have thought Corrupted G was going to come off the wall to hit yeah, it. He was going it. for the block. Maybe that's what he was doing. But in the end, it doesn't matter. That ball dropped out. And you know Sad Jr. is probably celebrating when oh, he yeah. saw that thing pop out right in front of him. And what a series. It's going to be tough to follow that yeah, series up. That was edge of your seat action. L look out for and, those wow. Look out for those tweets, I suppose, from all the players who won. And, and honestly, guys, think about that, right? And we've seen this before, where games and matches that are so important can come down to a single goal. That's what happened there. We went to overtime in game five, which means the next goal, guess what? You're in RLCS. So I can't imagine the pressure those players were feeling at that time, but huge kudos to both teams playing oh, absolutely yeah. incredible Rocket League. One more question for you guys, um, because I, what, what was the key there for FlyQuest? Obviously, they were able to overcome and win there in overtime. Was it experience? Because I like to think that there's a lot of veterans on that team. They've been playing a long time. Um, what, what do you think, guys? What was the edge there for FlyQuest? And how do you expect them to do in league play now that they're now that they're in? So I think both sides have a lot of veteran experience. Like even Moses, he's yeah. been around. He yeah. just barely missed out on season number three. So I think it was more about when they could get the boost. They were trying to play extremely fast. The problem was when they couldn't get the boost, they continued to try and play that way, and then they would just kind of have to sit in net. We saw, mm -hmm. like, Timmy scored probably three goals wide open from above the net because no one had boost uh, to defend it. So FlyQuest has to figure out that balance of we want to play fast but don't use every single boost that we get. So we'll see how they play. Yeah. But I could see them being a world championship team. They're probably right on the cusp, I would say, like battle around that fourth to sixth spot, I would say. I think FlyQuest did a, a really good job of – hitting the ball in very dangerous spots as opposed to just trying to brute force overpowering people. There was times where like Sad Jr. instead of putting a shot on net just hit it off the crossbar or off the backboard again. They were always just trying to hit the ball into space and get it around the Renegades defense and a lot of times that got two players from Renegades to commit to a challenge. And then on the other side of the ball though, Renegades, they were just and mainly Timmy was just making things happen out of thin air. Like he he alone was uh, the catalyst for Which is most of their goals. Pretty surprising because we would expect Dapper to also kind of step up in that spot, but he was relatively quiet this series. And I feel like if they want to make the championship series, yeah. then Dapper has to be on that offensive side as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Renegades, they're not out of it just yet. They still have another chance, potentially another couple chances to still uh, emerge in the Rocket League Championship Series. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Meanwhile, we have data in for your next matches, guys. So, so listen up here. Uh, again, it's all happening live. We're all getting these updates as we go, as, as these, these matches are happening. So next up, we're going to have G2. Ooh. G2 Esports going up against Incognito. That's going to be next on stream. After that, we're going to have Set to Destroy going up against Cloud9. Vengeance. And then Ghost going up against Fibian. So those are your next three matches. And again, these next three matches we're going to watch, the winners are in to the Rocket League Championship Series League play. So very important matches. That being said, we're going to take a short break here. When we come back, it's G2 Esports. Can they qualify for league play against Incognito? We're about to find out. Stay tuned.